Good evening. Welcome to tonight's reading from A Princess of Mars, previously titled Under the Moons of Mars, the first book of the Chronicles of Barsoom by Edgar Rice Burroughs. I'm Finn J.D. John, and I will be your reader tonight, under the auspices of my institution, the Friedrich Wilhelm von Jonst Library of Forgotten Worlds. Tonight, we are finishing this book. This is the last chapter. Chapter 28 At the Arizona Cave It was dark when I opened my eyes again. Strange, stiff garments were upon my body, garments that cracked and powdered away from me as I rose to a sitting posture. I felt myself over, from head to foot and from foot to head. I was clothed, although when I fell unconscious at the little doorway I had been naked. Before me was a small patch of moonlit sky which showed through a ragged aperture. As my hands passed over my body, they came in contact with pockets, and in one of these pockets a small parcel of matches wrapped in oiled paper. One of these matches I struck, and its dim flame lighted up what appeared to be a huge cave, toward the back of which I discovered a strange still figure huddled over a tiny bench. As I approached it, I saw that it was the dead and mummified remains of a little old woman with long black hair, and the thing it leaned over was a small charcoal burner upon which rested a round copper vessel containing a small quantity of greenish powder. Behind her, depending from the roof upon rawhide thongs and stretching entirely across the cave, was a row of human skeletons. From the thong which held them stretched another to the dead hand of the little old woman. As I touched the cord, the skeleton swung to the motion with a noise as the rustling of dry leaves. It was a grotesque and horrid tableau, and I hastened out into the fresh air, glad to escape from so gruesome a place. The sight which met my eyes as I stepped out upon the small ledge which ran before the entrance of the cave filled me with consternation. A new heaven and a new landscape met my gaze. The silvered mountains in the distance, the almost stationary moon hanging in the sky, the cacti-studded valley below me, were not of Mars. I could scarcely believe my eyes, but the truth slowly forced itself upon me. I was looking upon Arizona from the same ledge from which ten years before I had gazed with longing upon Mars. Burying my head in my arms, I turned, broken and sorrowful, down the trail from my cave. Above me shone the red eye of Mars, holding her awful secret forty-eight million miles away. Did the Martian reach the pump room? Did the vitalizing air reach the people of that distant planet in time to save them? Was my Dejah Thoris alive, or did her beautiful body lie cold in death beside the tiny golden incubator in the sunken garden of the inner courtyard of the palace of Tardos Mors, the Jeddak of Helium? For ten years I have waited and prayed for an answer to my questions. For ten years I have waited and prayed to be taken back to the world of my lost love. I would rather lie dead beside her there than live here on earth all these millions of terrible miles from her. The old mine, which I found untouched, has made me fabulously wealthy. But what care I for wealth? As I sit here tonight in my little study overlooking the Hudson, just twenty years have elapsed since I first opened my eyes upon Mars. I can see her shining in the sky through the little window by my desk, and tonight she seems to be calling to me again as she has not called before since that long dead night, and I think I can see across that awful abyss of space a beautiful black-haired woman standing in the garden of a palace, and at her side a little boy who puts his arms around her as she points into the sky toward the planet Earth, while at their feet is a huge and hideous creature with a heart of gold. I believe that they are waiting there for me and something tells me that I shall soon know. That is the end of A Princess of Mars by Edgar Rice Burroughs, the first book of the Chronicles of Barsoom. The text is copyright 1912 by Edgar Rice Burroughs. This reading is copyright 2014 by Finn J.D. John. Tomorrow we shall start the second book in the Chronicles of Barsoom, titled The Gods of Mars. More information about this project is at fawn-junst.org. Good night, and I wish you interesting dreams.